This is a film that is considered by many to be a classic piece of animation. It has a huge following, fans that really love this movie, it affected them in a certain way, and so they love it. And I feel really bad, because now I have to tear it apart a little bit. In ancient Japan, a man sets out on a journey to confront his past. Along the way, he has to fight demons and ninja clans, all this stuff. Along the way, he meets a spy from the Japanese government who poisons him and forces him to go along with him and work for him. And a woman with the ability to poison any man who touches her. I feel like the main point of this movie was to be edgy and cool and give you edgy, cool, violent visuals. And it succeeds at that. There's some really solid action direction here, and it, you know, you see people's heads get chopped off, lots of bloody bits, a few really great shot choices, and you know, there's parts of the movie where you're like, okay, that's clever the way they did that. But I never felt the impact in any of the action. When someone gets their head chopped off, I'm like, ooh, I'm just like, oh, he got his head chopped off. I found the characters to be shallow archetypes. I feel like I've seen these types of characters before and done better. Our protagonist, Jubei, is this mercenary ninja samurai type of guy. You know, he's got his cool sword, all that crap. He's haunted by his past, but in reality, he's a good guy. You know, every once in a while he says a cool thing, but he's just your typical anime hero. He's nothing, there's nothing special about him. This type of character has been done a lot better with a lot more humanity and soul. Kagero is the female ninja who, whenever she makes love to someone, they die of poison. Her whole character is that she's this hot-headed, impulsive person. When she goes out there, she doesn't quite do as well as she thinks she can. Literally what happens is she's like, I'm going out there, and then all of her ninja friends are like, no, you can't. And then she goes out there and she gets kidnapped and raped. <laughs> and that feels like her character the whole movie. She comes off as useless. And you know, her whole thing is, you know, she can't touch anyone because she'll kill them. That's supposed to be this horrible, tragic thing. You're supposed to feel sympathy for her, and I just don't. One character who had a little bit more going on was Dakuan, who is the Japanese government spy. It's kind of interesting to see someone who looks like a wise old man actually be this horrible person who's screwing over our main character. When your two main characters feel like really shallow archetypes, it's nice to have a character who's this morally ambiguous figure. But it's mainly just the concept of him that's interesting. He seems to mostly be a tool for exposition and a plot device to keep our characters down a certain path. But I do appreciate them trying to do something a little more interesting with that character. One thing this movie does a great job with is keeping up momentum, keeping the action going, you know, making it exciting, fast-paced, all that. But it loses something in that. It loses character development, build-up. These things that are really, really important. There are only very small, satisfying character moments in this movie. When it comes to the big, climactic action sequence, it can be as beautifully animated and gorgeous as it wants to be. But it's not satisfying because there's no build-up between the two characters that are fighting. We're not really introduced to the main villain until like two-thirds into the movie. You can have all of the cool action, the cool aesthetics, all of that that you want. But if you don't have characters that we care about, how are we supposed to care about the action? But I will also say that this movie has an excellent soundtrack. You got your cool action, you got your cool animation, your cool aesthetic. It's edgy, it's all that stuff. But I feel like there's no heart to it. There's nothing to keep you invested in the story. It just comes off as kind of a bland action movie. I was not emotionally attached to anything that was happening in the movie. It was just all, you know, cool. I'm gonna give Ninja Scroll a C+. The best thing this movie did was inspire the structure for Metal Gear Solid 3.